What's the word, y'all? The 2023 NBA draft was extremely, extremely interesting. I want to say off rip, I am not a dude that's invested in college ball, the OTE, international play, the G League. That is my way of saying that I, I am no expert when it comes to the draft. I never act like I am or anything like that. I just, I kind of just go off apps when it comes to the draft. But this was the first draft in a, in a very, very long time that I was extremely, extremely excited for. And that was because of some super selfish reasons. This was the first draft class where I was able to talk to the talent coming into it. And I got a lot of people saying they were viewers of my videos, even when they were younger or still to this day. So I had a lot of people in this draft class that I was rooting for on a personal level just because they've been rocking with the channel. I've been in this YouTube game for so long, people are getting drafted saying, bro, I, I, was, I was in seventh grade when I found your videos. What? Stop playing, man. You're making me feel old. But again, the draft is extremely interesting. But before we start talking about that, let me tell you about our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Shopify. Head over to shopify.com slash KLT4Q so you can get a free trial. Shopify is an easy to use all in one commerce platform. It allows you to start, grow, and manage a business. A little over a year ago, I started a brand name Enjoy Basketball. We dropped these hats, this mini hoop, and a bunch of other pieces of merch. And when I started this brand, I knew absolutely nothing about starting a brand and managing that brand, but Shopify came in clutch. Shopify powers more entrepreneurs than anyone else in the world. We're talking millions of businesses across over 175 different countries. There's so many different tools for people that basically have no experience. You can create your website in just a few clicks, and that's for using the starter plan. They have some of the best customer marketing tools, like sending the best emails for commerce, or if you just want to learn the ropes of starting a business, they have courses from some very, very proven experts like Damon John. They've helped so many people's dreams come true. So head over to shopify.com slash KOT for a Q so you can get your free trial. Shout out to Shopify again for sponsoring this video. I always love getting sponsors around here and, and Shopify has been helping a brother out for, for about a year or so now. So it's cool to have them as a sponsor. I told y'all in the Porzingis video a couple days ago that I was trying my very hardest not to get my hopes high for a Damian Lillard trade or Zion Williams trade or Paul George trade or whatever the rumors uh, were out there. And we basically got... Close to no player movement. We saw like Rashawn Holmes get traded or Davis Bertans get traded. But the only, the, the big trades happened or the trades that were happening were people going from the 30th overall pick to the 32nd overall pick. And, and that boy Brad Stevens was on the phone all damn day. Uh, he He's just out here making trades. He's just having fun out there. Of course, the draft started Victor Wimbyama since the moment... We knew the Spurs got the first overall pick. We knew exactly where they were going. He could have bought his house that day because there was no ifs, ands, and buts about him going first overall. I don't really have a lot to say about uh, Vic, Victor Wibanyama. Video game character, crazy potential. Excited to see what he does with the Spurs, and I'm excited for the Spurs' future. But the draft really started at pick number two. Was it going to be Scoot? Was it going to be B. Mills? And it ended up being Brandon Miller. And from my understanding, from the people that I talked to, this was a decision that was made in the last... You know how to say blank team is on the clock and the timer is going down a lot of times these teams already know exactly who they want to pick and it's more about the tv thing because they the tv wants the opportunity to talk about the previous pick so they'll give you three minutes to even though you know your pick from my understanding th them boys let that time go through and they didn't really make the decision until they made that decision if you know you know what i'm saying b mills versus scoop went down to the last possible min minute and they went with brandon miller and no i'm not going to give you an opinion whether or not it was the right pick or the wrong pick because again i don't know and only time will tell all i know is projectable when it comes to projecting these players brandon miller can project to be a wing that can be one of the best in the game and that is harder to find traditionally than a guard. Does that mean it is the right pick? I'm not saying that either, you know, but they went with their guy. And the only thing I can ask for all 30 NBA teams is making a draft pick. Go with the guy that you feel the most comf comfortable with. Because I feel like in previous years, there's guys that got drafted based on the mock and not necessarily based on the fact that this team was in love with the prospect, right? So there are a lot of players that got drafted in history that didn't even work out for the team that eventually drafted them, but the team had the pick in the spot. This player's available. We're going to do it because people think that this guy's going to be good. So I hope that they drafted a dude that they're completely invested in. Only time will tell. And then with him going number two, that means number three was Scoot Henderson. And when Scoot, when, when Brandon Miller was drafted second overall, this is why I was kind of on the edge of my seat because what's going to happen? You know, the Pelicans are interested in Scoot Henderson, but we didn't know if Scoot Henderson was going to be there at two or was he going to be there at three. And now he's there at three. And the Portland Trailblazers might be willing to trade three if that means getting the right piece for Damian Lillard. And instead, they drafted with it. 
And the worst thing about this is that the Damian Lillard rumors will not die because he's still on the roster. And again, I'm not ever going to be a guy that's going to come up here and say, hey, train Dame. Because at this point, I, I, I'm so de detached from the idea of trade a Dame that I don't even have an opinion on it no more. You know what I'm saying? They drafted with the pick, which is something I personally would have done. And they got to do that when it comes to NBA readiness at the guard position, at the point guard position, it takes a special player to, to be NBA ready. And not NBA ready in a traditional sense that's like, Oh, he can play minutes right now, but I mean, like, he has the ability to start in this league as a point guard. He's been doing two a days for like six months, and from every workout that he did, and it wasn't many of them, it was just two. Everybody said he bodied his workouts. So, what happens in Portland? That's only time will tell. And and when it happens, if something happens, we'll talk about it here. But I'm not projecting anything. Then we got the the Thompson twins. The Thompson twins are my guys, man. Um, uh, a man told me he was the guy that said he's been watching my video since he was a shorty, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm rooting for you immediately. So when, when Ahmed gets drafted fourth overall, I'm excited. That felt pretty in, in, in stone. You know what I'm saying? Every mock that I saw, he was going at four. And then at five, we got a sword. The brothers get picked back to back going to the Detroit Pistons. Again, without watching much OTE, only the individual highlights or, or highlight reels or scouting reels. I I really like these boys' games. You know what I'm saying? With the ability to pass from Amin Thompson, obviously the biggest question marks of both of these, these brothers is their ability to shoot. Or will they be able to, to get that throughout the course of their career? Uh, for some people, it happens. And for others, it doesn't. Anthony Black went six overall to the Orlando Magic. And you know what, Magic fans, y'all know, you know what I'm saying? You, if you've been watching with the time, you know I have this little little thing on my shoulder that makes me jealous of y'all considering what you, the, the trades you did with my favorite team a couple years ago. Um, and now you're able to pick up Anthony Black, who is my guy Pierre's favorite player in this entire draft class. Um, big guard, high, high IQ player. Um, and, and the thing that I think is the most interesting about him is that he's just a talented athlete, playing football, playing all these other sports, and being very, very good at it. Um, obviously, similar to some of the other people drafted before him with the Thompson twins, his jump shot is the thing that is the biggest question mark. But we interviewed him at Media Day, and he said he his jump shot is a lot better than meets the eye. Um, I, I guess it makes sense for him to say that. You know what I'm saying? As he's trying to build his stock up. Uh, but I guess only time will tell. I mean, they got a lot of talent over there, and I'm very curious to see what happens between Markio folks, Anthony Black, Jalen Suggs. I mean, there's a lot of talented young players, and how do they balance who, who gets the minutes, who doesn't? Um, only time will tell on that as well. Then we got Bilal. Dang it, Bilal. I swear I learned how to say your name, and now I can't, I can't do it anymore. Man, this is what I say. The moment you step on an NBA court and I hear it, once when you're playing for the Wizards is that that is that is the moment I'll remember it uh, phonetically. Don't ask me how to spell it for another at least three or four seasons. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is the first moment of the draft where I was like, okay, not this, not this is getting really really interesting because Bilal had been a guy that's been rising up the draft boards over the last couple uh, weeks, really. Um, with him playing alongside Victor Wimiyama, Vic was vouching for him pretty heavily on Twitter and stuff. And you can see why a, a team would take a shot there because the upside is ridiculous. And a team that was the team to do it was the Washington Wizards. And what I was seeing on our draft coverage thing is that the Wizards are in a position right now where they can afford to swing for the fences at the eighth overall pick because based on where their roster is in the moment, Next year is probably the year where they have a top five-ish pick. Again, only time will tell whether or not they end up being better than maybe what their roster says. But at number eight, how many surefire things are there on the board? So I, I don't know. So why don't you go out there and go get a dude that could be, that he has the potential to be something crazy, even if that means that when you have a crazy amount of potential to be something crazy, there's also a chance that he does the exact opposite of that. Um, the last hopefully for their sake, pick within this 7 to 10 range for the next couple seasons because this is where they've been stuck at. Probably my favorite pick in the lottery is the Pacers getting Jairus Walker. When I, when I tell you from my point of view, that is a match made in heaven between the, the high upside he has, the defensive intensity he'll bring immediately. When we talked to this brother, bro, we asked him about like who is a guy in the NBA that you feel like is projectable for you. The man said LeBron. He said LeBron. And I think when it comes to being an NBA player, you need a level of, of delusion, I guess is the word I want to say, in order to be successful. <laughs> he ain't going to be Bron. Spoiler alert, he's not going to be Bron. 
But boy, do I really like what the Pacers are doing over there between him and Tyrese Halliburton. Miles Turner um, having a career year last year. Benedict Ma Like, they just have a lot of stuff. And they were fun before the trade deadline last season and before they had some injuries strike their team. And now adding a guy like Jairus Walker, another weapon for Tyrese Halliburton to make uh, look good, help look good. I mean, I'm loving what the Pacers are doing. Like, I genuinely feel like he fell into their lap and they could not be happier. Uh, Taylor Hendricks is another dude that that's a, a fan or a viewer of the channels and stuff So we got nothing but love for him either and he is going to the Utah Jazz I saw some criticism about this pick because they have Larry Markkinen and they also have Walker Kessler But what Larry Markkinen has showed us over the last couple of seasons that he can slide over to the three and just be fine there uh, And it felt like based on what was available Taylor Hendricks what he could provide immediately and for the future feels about right I made a tweet that was like, okay, see fans can can I join the bandwagon? You know what I'm saying? It's not because of Shea or Giddy or Lou Dort or, or any of these dudes. Casey Wallace is my guy. Simple as that. One of the coolest dudes we talked to, and I told him when we talked to him, wherever you get drafted to, I'm on the bandwagon because I believe in you. If there's one archetype of player that I'm willing to bet my money on, it is a Kentucky guard because those dudes go from college and go to the NBA, and they're usually pretty, pretty good. Now, the thing about OKC is that he's got a lot of people to compete with for the minutes. And I think a healthy competition is good for him and all the other people. Between Giddy, between Shea, between Man, between Dort. Like, these are all players that he's going to be trying to take minutes away from. And I think it's healthy. I don't know how much burn he'll get his rookie season. But because he is such a dynamic on-ball pest, I think it's going to be hard for him not to get quality minutes early in his career. Now, that's top 10. I definitely can't go through all 58 pieces in the draft. So let me just go over some of the other picks that I enjoy. When the Rockets drafted Cam Whitmore at four, at 20, I was like, that, again, the medical records for Cam is the reason why he fell. And at the 20th overall pick, a guy that could have been going as high as four, it felt like a no-brainer for the team like the Houston Rockets. Will it work out? I don't know. But that was a that's a pick that I would 100% have done if I was in their position. And they did it. Jordan Hawkins was a pick that I also really like. Another dude that told me he's been watching for years, which is really cool. Fashion of the night. I, the winner or loser, depending on your perspective, was probably Grady Dick, right? Great Grady came in with his uh, Dorothy from Wizard of Oz fit and the, the chain and everything. Um... Yeah, you make your own decisions on whether or not that was a dub or anyway. I, I ain't saying nothing. Either way, um, the draft is always a really cool time because so many dreams become a reality. Um, and and that's, that's what it's about at the end of the day. Obviously, every single one of these 58 draft picks are not going to hit. Um, but even if they don't, they'll always have that moment of getting their name called. Even if some of them are getting drafted doing uh, Taco Bell commercials. Or in this case, Isaiah Wong just got drafted in a... State Farm commercial. So if Isaiah Wong ends up being a stud, we'll look back on this and say, hey, he got drafted through the commercial like Jokic or um, like Ayo DeSumo because those two players are on the same level.